So here is the P900 that I used for my time lapse of the moon passing Jupiter recently and I had a number of comments asking me how I got the focus so sharp that we could see Jupiter's moons very clearly. Quite often we see on flat earth channels videos with the P900 that are just terribly out of focus when they are filming stars or the planets. So I thought I'd make this quick video just to explain how I did it. So what you're looking at here is called a Batinov mask and these are frequently used by astronomers to allow them to focus their telescopes as precisely as possible. And we can also use them on cameras such as the P900 and other DSLRs for the same purpose. I have different size versions for each of my telescopes and this one is 72 millimeters on a 67 to 72 millimeter adapter. So it can screw straight onto the front of the P900, just like that. As you can see, it has slits at three different angles and the principle of operation is very straightforward, allowing you to quickly and accurately focus your camera. So this is the Batinov mask for my Skywatcher ED72 telescope. And as you can see, it just clips onto the front like that. And after you have focused the telescope perfectly, you can just remove it. And there it is alongside a larger mask that I use with the Celestron 9.25 SCT. And in case you're wondering what all the plastic is for, I can spend weeks away from home at times with my job. So I like to protect my telescopes and astronomy cameras from dust. And I'll do that by wrapping them in plastic. It works extremely well. Here is the artificial horizon that you've seen in previous videos and I'm planning to make a few more videos featuring this. So using the mask is very straightforward. After you fit it to the camera or telescope, you need to point towards a distant light source. When the camera is completely out of focus, you can clearly see the three different angled lines from the Batinov mask. As you approach perfect focus, things look very different. And the objective is to obtain an image where the three diffraction spikes are in perfect symmetry, just like that. You can see we have two cross lines here and the vertical line is running straight through the middle. If you're inside perfect focus, that line will not be directly at the center. And similarly, if you're outside focus, it will look the same. So you simply need to adjust the focus on the camera manually until you have a symmetrical image that looks like this. And here is a video focusing on Jupiter. And you can see that using the Batinov mask once again, allows us to have an extremely accurate focus. So when I remove the mask, we can see Jupiter and the moons. But you'll notice that Jupiter itself is quite overexposed. Now that is the setting needed to see the moons. If we set the exposure value to see Jupiter more clearly, we lose sight of the moons. And that's what you see here. But you can see that with the Batinov mask, we were able to focus so accurately that we can see the lines of the cloud patterns on Jupiter itself. Yet we see no moons at this exposure level. To see the moons, we have to use much higher exposure, like that. And this is what it looks like using the Batinov mask on a telescope where the image is out of focus and then we can more precisely center that image. Now one of the advantages of modern software is that it can analyze the position of those lines far more accurately than we can with the naked eye and that allows for even more precise focus as you'll see here. So I've got the Batinov mask on now and the telescope is looking at Arcturus and you can see what happens when it's out of focus. You have these two crossing diffraction lines and then the central one is off-center and that means it's out of focus. So what you need to do is just 
slowly focus to bring that into the center. And if I go too far, it's out of focus the other way. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. That looks reasonably well focused. Now, the software I'm using, SharpCap Pro, it has a focus assistant which you can use with this Batonov mask. So if we plug it in there, what it does is carefully analyze the position of those lines. And what you're trying to do is get that number down as low as possible. So this allows you to be even more accurate. And you can see when I zoom in, it's showing that it's not quite there. It's pretty close, but not quite there. But now I can make it even more accurate. Okay, so I'm going the wrong way. I'll go back the other way. And you can see I've just gone a little too far, the graph down the bottom. So it's very fine. I'm literally moving the focuser just a couple of millimeters at a time. Not even that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can see that line is quite flat now and it's showing a very low number. I'll just reset it. And it will fluctuate a little bit. It did say that it does fluctuate just due to atmospheric distortion, but I think that's probably as good as I'm going to get. So the telescope is now looking at the Triffid Nebula and again if I just increase the exposure value you can see more and more stars. That's now 8.3 seconds and I found that taking it up to about 50 seconds is perfect for the Triffid Nebula. I'll just get this Triffid Nebula as it pops up. Okay, so this is the P900 with the Batonov mask and I've got it on maximum optical zoom just looking at some street lights across the valley. Now I've got the focus assigned to the side button. Let's see how it works. So there's our diffraction spikes and we just want to put them perfectly in the center. That looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is take off the mask, which is just loosely screwed on. And there you have it. Beautiful focus. And I'll put a link in the description below to this site, which is farpointastro.com. This is where you can buy the Batonov mask, and this is the 67mm version, which will fit perfectly with a P900. I chose a larger version that will allow me to use it on different cameras, and I just use a step up or step down ring as required. So I'll just leave you with a quick preview of a future video, and I wonder if anyone can tell me what that bright star is. And what is its declination? That is relevant to the point of my future video. As it plays, I stop the tracking on the telescope and we can then see two satellites stationary in the video as the stars are moving by. 
Can anyone tell me the name of those two satellites? Okay, Emma is flying the space shuttle. There's the space shuttle. Okay, the first thing we want you to do is bank left. Go left. That's the way. Now bank right. Go right. That's the way. Now pitch up. Oh, perfect. Now pitch down. Very good. Now bank left again. Bank left. Go left, sweetheart, that's it. Now pitch up. Wow, are you a pilot like daddy?